guys, a, a time that has finally come, a period where pretty much everyone in sports has been waiting for. Um, the NCAA imposes a policy where athletes can finally get paid for the use of their name, image, and likeness. And and I'm sure you guys have seen athletes around the world in all different sports showing their emotions on on social media. You have JJ Reddick saying he would have made a bag if this was an option when he was in college. Obviously, the whole Reggie Bush situation that that is somewhat unfolding in front of us right now. Um, There's many players that, that are saying, what they could have made. And, and it's shocking to me that this is coming in 2021 far too long after the, a policy like this should have been imposed. Players can make money now off, off such things like their autographs, endorsement deals and appearances they make, as long as they still follow the schools uh, of the school state, local laws and laws and stuff like that, which is understandable. Um, you have football player Graham Mertz from Wisconsin releasing and trademark and a logo that he put on his social media platforms and you have an Iowa basketball player, Jordan Bowenin, has announced a branded apparel line that was released on Thursday. So players are already taking advantage of this new rule that that is put in place. And I want to know, and I can guess what your guys' opinion is on this as well. But Thomas, let, let's start with you here. What What is your opinion on the NCAA imposing this on players and now they can profit on themselves? And how do you think this really affects college athletes moving forward? Good job, NCAA. Finally. You finally did something right. Finally used your noggins. You let the athletes really get the spotlight that they deserve. Now, I wanted to kind of touch on an interesting situation for a team that really could have made a lot of money. And that was that those early to mid 2000s USC football teams with Reggie and Lendell White, you know, players like that, like they could have made so much money just to think about it. I mean, Reggie Bush was the face of college sports for that two year stretch. He was at USC and Lendale White was the Robin to Reggie's Batman. So they had a thunder and lightning duo in that backfield. They could have made a ton of money simply doing like thunder and lightning, like merchandise, things like that, or like a clothing line maybe themed around them. So it's things like that to think about. It's crazy. But for the NCAA to finally let the athletes make a little bit of money, that's a good move on them. And I think that this will help the athletes that are at smaller schools. Maybe they'll start to gain a little bit more of a spotlight. You mentioned Jordan Bohannon, who's at Iowa, the basketball player who played with Matt Garza. Obviously, no one thinks of Iowa when you think of college basketball. I mean, what what, what goes on in Iowa? A field of dreams? I have no idea. So that's kind of what you think of when you think of Iowa. But now that the NCAA is going to have him make money with a clothing brand that could put a spotlight on him, maybe that leads him to making the roster on an NBA team or he gets in the G League before he goes overseas. So I think this is a good move. This definitely helps out a lot of those smaller school athletes. And shout out, as I said earlier in the show, Patrick Kelly of Fordham Men's Basketball and Shuba Ohams of Fordham Men's Basketball, who are um, about to be barstool athletes for (laughs) representing Fordham University. So kudos to them. And I hope barstool, they pick up our very own Kelly Bright and Gigi Spear. They would also be great pickups for the barstool athletes. But again, kudos to the NCAA for finally making a good move on their part. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot to like here. Uh, I mean, these are multi-billion dollar industries. I mentioned it um, at the top of the show. I mean, ESPN, NCAA, I mean, they're profiting so much off of these uh, these athletes. I mean, NCAA usually makes over $1 billion every year. I mean, due to COVID, they only made 519, only 519. But these are making hundreds of million dollars. Even ESPN, ESPN Plus, where they have all their A10, ACC, uh, they give you all, all these different sports um, for a subscription base, and they're really profiting off of these kids, people who want to watch certain athletes play. So I think that's really good here. And the other thing is that it gives athletes a chance to do some good. Like Trevor Lawrence had a GoFundMe with his girlfriend for COVID relief, and NCAA took that down because it was against their rules. And stuff like that can also benefit and be good for everyone. So there's a lot of ways to look at this that can benefit athletes. At the end of the day, this is really a tactical move for NCAA because they see some guys going to the G League. We have two Jalen Greens, an example that he's in the G League right now. So there are people going straight to professional basketball in place of going to play, um, let's say, in NCAA or for a team like Duke or North Carolina. So this is really a move to help keep those athletes. So it's a tactical move by NCAA, but it's one that's really been we've been waiting for for a while and 
it opens up a lot of questions like Reggie Bush and all these things that make it fun for people like us to talk about. And, and you, you mentioned certain athletes that make it fun to talk about Zion Williamson, for example. I mean, I mean, if, if this, if this was a rule when he, when he was in college, you could only imagine, imagine how he could have profited. I, I know you said the, the GoFundMe thing. And I mean, I feel like for the NCAA to take stuff like that down before this is just ludicrous. I mean, I mean, what sense does that make? I, they're simply trying to help people and they just, they deserve to have that opportunity to help people. Not only can they help other people, they can help themselves. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, a guy who first overall, I mean, he should be able to make money for who he is and how good he is as an athlete how good of a person he is outside of the field. Uh, it, it, it's just crazy that it has taken until 2021 for something like this to come and play, because you have to look back and say like, well, do we owe things to anybody else who, who used to be a former athlete? I mean, people like, like Re- Reggie Bush, we keep going back to him, but he's, this is like such a important topic. And Reggie Bush is very vocal about this on, on, on Twitter. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the statements that have made and everything. So it's it, it just sad that, this is really how it comes down to. And let, let me ask you guys this, Mike, do you think that the NCAA will keep this for a long period of time? Or do you think this is kind of a experimental time where they put this ro- rule into effect and they can kind of take this away later? Or do you think this is, this is it, it it's in for the long term, and they want players to actually profit off themselves for the long term? It's, it's a good point you make. I think there's a lot of questions there. I mean, obviously one question I have is what happens when, some of these athletes are making upwards of thousands and who knows millions of dollars and they're going to school as college athletes. They're not professional athletes, but they're being paid like ones. I think that could run into some problems. I I think there's good things about this. Like if an athlete wanted to run a podcast or if an athlete had a TikTok or YouTube channel and wanted to profit off of that, they should be allowed to do that. They shouldn't be killed just because they're a college athlete. Like they should, to be able to, the image and likeness is theirs to own. Like that's completely fine. But I also see the flip side. If these endorsements and these athletes, like you mentioned, Zion Williamson, let's say he was making two, three million while he was at Duke. What does that mean for college basketball? And some people argue it takes away the fun of it, that these are college athletes and they're not making money. So that's the flip side of the argument. I think NCAA needs to find the right balance. So I think it's a good stepping stone, but they need, to watch how this works because if these guys are starting to get paid like pro athletes then it's going to take away a lot lot of what people watch college athletics for but at the same time they all everyone owns their image and likeness and they should be able to do with it whatever they please and if that means making money i'm all for that and a lot of these people don't end up going to the nba they don't end up playing basketball overseas and they end up just being part of the workforce and if it means they can make some money while they're at college if it means for their parents a lot of these kids don't always come from the greatest um, places where they, and they need to support a family or a mother or father. This is something that could help them do that. So there's a lot of ways you can look at this. And I think NCAA just needs to be careful about don't open the floodgates, but let's just watch how it works right now. And I think if it works out well, and if it's good for the players and if it's good for the NCAA, then they'll keep it. I'm on the side with you, Mike, as well. We definitely have to, keep a close eye on what could happen here because some of the college athletes, if you really think about it, have been deprived, I guess, of the credit that they deserve and the rewards that they should have had years ago. And now we keep going back to Reggie Bush, JJ Reddick's another one. And if you really want to go back the fab five at Michigan, who kind of really started this whole image money-making thing because people were doing the black socks and making money off of that. And then they were taking the Michigan M and, making money off of it. And then the players in their protests, they just wore plain t-shirts. They didn't wear the black socks and they didn't take off the warm-up pants until the game started. So they try to protest against it, but Mike. Or how many actually, like bootleg jerseys are online that you can find? Right. Like, that's also true. Right. The bootleg jerseys and those, those fake ones. So, but I think you're right. They have to be careful with this. I, I think slowly, but surely it'll start to open up. But if college athletes start to, I guess abuse the rule is the word I'm looking for, mm-hmm. you know, that, that could be a real, real bad luck. And, you know, with guys like Zion, Reggie, um, Kumar rocker, Jack lighter, big guys like that. Okay. If they make, they, they will probably make more money than the average college athlete. That's understandable. But if you get 
guys that go to Appalachian State, let's just say, and they're making like an NBA player salary of like seven million dollars. I think that's where they need to really be careful. But this is definitely a good step in the right direction for the NCAA. Yeah, Mike, I thought you made a good point about some players possibly making upwards of a million, two million dollars. And that comes another point where you have other athletes that attend college and other non-athletes that attend college. Well, talking about maybe how it's unfair that they're making all this money and then they're here kind of left in the dark with having to fend for themselves and and get a job. Cause I know, and we all know numerous college athletes have to go out and get a job, uh, a second job, even professional athletes get a second job in order to really just cover the cost of their living. And obviously if you're a top college athlete, you're, you're most likely on scholarship, but this just helps them with like living their life, like, like they can pay rent and stuff like that. So like, I don't really see anything bad. And if someone wants to have this topic of conversation of, Oh, it's unfair. They get paid and I don't get paid or they get more than I do. then too bad, honestly. I mean, I don't feel bad for those people. If, if you want to get the, get the money that some other people deserve and should get, you got to really work harder and just and like be an athlete and, and be ready to take on any challenge that is thrown to you if you want to get the money that these guys do. So it all comes down to that. 